Hey everyone, Brian Von Vier here, back at it again with another set of D&D stories. Today we have, what are some of the best D&D campaign ideas you've ever had? Get your thinking caps on, kids. We're in for a doozy. Basically, copied Star Trek The Next Generation. Sailing the ocean, contacting new countries and kingdoms, using diplomacy to get them to join the Federation, replaced the threat of the Borg with the Mind Flayers. Felt right to keep the hive mind bad guys. Party were big fans of TNG, so we're happy with the fantasy Star Trek crossover. I had an idea for a campaign designed to support a player base that couldn't always be consistent with attendance. In game, people would sometimes just disappear. Anyone could. There's even a specific magic item created to help with the inconvenience a special bag of holding set with several bags all tied to the same demi plane so that even if one person in your adventuring group disappeared, along with everything they were carrying, the party can still access the important quest items. But it's not just adventurers, it's shopkeepers and townsfolk and such as well. And literally no one knows why. No one remembers anything from when they were gone, and of course, there's plenty of people who fake it for their own benefit if they can get away with it. It's pretty rare though, so most people don't miss much of their life, just weird periods here and there. I had the idea that in the end, things start to really ramp up. Disappearances increase dramatically, not in the party itself, because that's based on real world factors, but the NPCs start disappearing all the time, and certain elements of reality start to act strangely. Then the whole party, on a day when everyone can for sure make it, gets taken all at once. Turns out, there is a giant cosmic war going on between Celestials and Fiends, and your characters and many valiant heroes have been called to help in what would hopefully be a decisive battle. They all have max levels and overpowered gear, and depending on how many times they've been missing, they're well recognized and well loved by the forces here. There's a friendly Celestial whose job it is to bring them up to speed, since no one can ever remember their time here on the other side. The party accidentally wakes up an ancient nation buried beneath the current one for millennia. The citizens long dead, their ancient automatons wake up to defend their country from the <clears throat> invaders. Warforged army, led by an ancient AI and magic slash industrial dungeons, uncovering the mystery of what happened to these people. Welcome to Harmony. You are level 9 villains. You work for the newly ascended Dark Lord a 17-year-old hormonal teenage girl with the power of a full Dark Lord with all the teenage angst. As her most trusted advisors, you each have positions of power within the kingdom, such as Castle, Ambience, and Music Director, Herald of the Kingdom and Game Announcer, Lever Pooler and Executioner, Union Buster. <laughs> you can't let them goblins unionize, huh, am I right? Here's the catch. See, the forces of good and evil are real and they really like what's called the protocol. Stories have power, and there is a certain way to do things. The youngest prince will rescue the princess, villains must monologue, and there will always be a Dark Lord. The Dark Lord is very good at these protocols. All people of power are, and you and the lands of darkness figured out long ago that proper <clears throat> villainy, such as floating castles, undead armies, and germ warfare are ways to quickly have an orphan knight charging in on the back of a fancy horse with a lance made of light aimed squarely at your posterior. Also, killing your own tax generators, I mean, <coughs> citizens, is a quick way to go broke real fast. So, if someone has to be a dark lord in a dark kingdom, why not you guys? Y'all figured out real quick that you need the appearance of the dark lord doing just enough evil to be inconvenient, satisfy the forces of balance, but not enough to call down divine thunder in the form of an intrepid adventuring party. So now here are the adventures that can go on. Find a paramour for your dark lord, which basically means locating a prince or a princess from a nearby kingdom who vibes with the whole dark lord thing, and whose parents you can convince to not go to war against you letting them date your Dark Lord so they can vibe and not let shenanigans get in the way. A good kingdom hired you to make a dungeon so they can properly get their youngest son to be a hero, but he just wants to sing. 
The wizard from the west has issued a prophecy that a foul creature will ascend the Dark Lord's throne. Better roll them into your organization with the quickness. The goblins want better pay and are doing a slowdown of trash disposal. Huh, <laughs> gotta whip them into shape, right? The orc chief to the south needs help beating back the remnants of an undead army. Reinforce your ally. The do-gooder kingdom down the road is having a string of murders. They have hired you as consultants to investigate and advise their greatest <clears throat> hero. Go make some money. Not really a full campaign, but the opening. Have everyone make level 1 characters without personality traits. Session 1 is a prologue where you hand out level 15 characters. They played through these characters' final dungeon on the way to the big bad evil guy. Halfway in, they start finding traps already triggered and minions already killed. When they finally get to the big bad evil guy, he's already dead, and something else is there. This creature kills the party easily. The level 15 characters then wake up in the bodies of the level 1 characters that everybody made. The campaign is them figuring out what happened and how to stop the new big bad. PCs are from one of two primary nations competing for the limited resources on a floating island continent. The nation in the north controls the only lake or major water source and by extent produces the majority of the land's food. The one to the south is situated over the part of land with more depth below, and thus controls all the metal and precious mineral mines. In the center sat a neutral zone and trading city, which had the potential to become its own power since more and more talented folks from the north and south started to meet there and exchange ideas rather than military jibes. In the east is a mountain range, which they believe to be the edge of the island, but there is a tribe living in the desert on the other side of the mountains which is slowly burrowing its way through using eldritch magics from above. Lastly, in the vast forests to the west, a huge monolith has appeared, visible on the horizon to every person. It is believed that the monolith is linked to what is below the island, though nobody actually knows what lies below. It was to be a sandbox, the course of which would be decided by whether the players wanted to go north, south, east, west, up, or down. Unfortunately, it was also my first time trying to run a game and I suffered from inexperience while my players suffered from choice paralysis. My greatest idea is the resurrection of PCs that have died. You all start at level 1 with the same class as your major class when the character died, on a tie, flip a coin or choose. However, you all gain the undead race and a certain something depending on the class. You have to complete a certain part of the original story in which your character died preferably a minor thing because characters from different campaigns could be a bit troublesome. Having the party's necromancer turn into the big bad evil guy at the end of Out of the Abyss by picking up Orcus's wand and the rest of the party and him fighting to dominate or save the world. I really want to do a large-scale planar odyssey, just sending the players not only to visit each plane, but really travel through their levels and facing the different challenges of the environment and beings that live there. Trying to shelter from razor-sharp glass rain on Acanthius. The communication issues as you travel amid deafening gales and cocytus. Desperately attempting to keep from being underfoot in the massive, frantic machine of Mechanus. The haunting horror of foraging in the beast lands and hearing a human scream of pain from a caught deer. Admittedly, I'm dreadful at the back end DM work due to a short attention span and general laziness, so it's a pipe dream until I ever sit down to start building something. Not to mention the challenge of convincing a bunch of squishy mortals to go to all these inhospitable places. The fallen dragon emperor has re-emerged in a new age, but has taken a human form as a disguise. He starts a fanatical anti-magic religious cult and becomes its pope, leading a crusade against all non-human races and anything of magical origin in a secret bid to disarm the populace of the magical weapons that defeated him last time. His cause is backed by rich merchants who see magic as an anti-competitive, anti-free market threat against their wealth. This alliance leads to an increasingly authoritarian power structure and pogroms against non-humans begin taking place on the edges of the regime's influence. The party comprises of the last followers of a diminished god, on a quest to return them to glory. Each party member has a different relationship to their deity. 
paladin, warlock, cleric, sorcerer, any class would be permissible with a suitable justification. A bard might be their divine herald, or a fighter their literal champion. The party could collaboratively create the deity during session zero as well as the exact nature of their quest to restore them. Reinstating a nature god would be very different from a dark god of vengeance, for example. The multiverse is on the edge of collapse, time and space are twisting away, and it's time to save the world before time ceases to be at all. The players create several characters, each a different version of themselves, as they've reincarnated throughout history. Each character would occupy a different tier of play. One group would start at level 1, another at level 5, and so on. They would have to make use of the now permeable nature of time to pass information to their past and future selves in order to alter the course of history and save the world. Each party member belongs to one of the game's monstrous races. They are tasked with uniting their various ornery peoples to stand against the encroaching, disciplined, and organized front of human expansion, against which no single race or tribe can stand. United, they have a chance. If only Golthrock the Gnarled could stop using goblins as footballs over there. Card Collectors powerful fey creature pisses off the gods by creating the deck of many things. Oh no. Gods decide the deck holds too much power and banish the cards across the multiverse. Fey creature is OP and has means to transdimensional travel, but is cursed by the gods and cannot look for the cards themselves. Fey creature enlists the help of adventurers to find and assemble the deck of many things. The Eternal Warfront. Two nations share a border and have been at war for centuries. Both nations are nationalistic and propaganda fueled. The party is conscripted into the royal military of one of the nations and fights in the ongoing campaign. Breadcrumbs of barriers blocking certain teleportation magic and demonic architecture in hidden ruins that the party occasional come across. Turns out both kings are demons and are warring for the position of second in command for a powerful demon lord. They were given this demi plane made up of only the two countries to play their war game, but the demon lord set it up as a game neither of them could win. You know, for Demon Lord funsies. Party has to convince the inhabitants of both countries of the truth and get them to fight, hoping to get both nations released to the material plane. Hey everyone, Brian Von VA here, back at it again, just checking in after the video as per usual. Make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and to ring that bell if you want to get notified whenever we post a new vid or when we go live. And if you have a story you'd like to tell to us that we could read out loud, please do so on our subreddit r slash Mr. Ripper. Alternatively, if you want to see a little bit more action or different uh, content in general, as it were, come on over to Riptovia, our secondary channel. Links for both will be in the description below. Using a help action, hey, come visit me too, by the way, Brian Von VA over on Twitch and on YouTube, where I stream games and do a lot of fun memes too. All the love, everybody. Please stay safe out there. It's getting chillier out there in the world, so make sure to bundle up, stay hydrated, stay well fed, and, of course, be safe. I love you all. We'll see you next time. Bye for now.